Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about current risk across the crypto markets. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So to start our discussion, I want to start with Bitcoin. And I think this is Bitcoin's a useful one to be tracking because it tends to set the tone for the crypto market, right? If you've been around the market, you've seen this for yourself. When Bitcoin does well, the rest of the market tends to do well. When Bitcoin does poorly, the rest of the market tends to do poorly. So watching Bitcoin can be informative about the broader health or maybe trajectory of the crypto market. So where does our risk indicator, the upside downside potential indicator or UDPI, what does it think about Bitcoin's risk across different timeframes? So we have three different versions of the UDPI that we track. We have the long term that cares about moves that play out over weeks or excuse me, over months to years. So a longer term preference the medium term that cares about moves that play out over weeks to months, and then the short term that cares about moves that play out over days to weeks. So a shorter time focus there. What we can see is that they're telling some interesting um, things and things that are frankly, I think make sense given what we know about the broader market, right? So the long-term UDPI is the lowest, negative 2.22. And what you can actually see is that from the very bottom back here in late um, January, we have realized a good amount of, of a, real, a reasonable amount of upside potential, you know, coming off of negative three, now getting up closer to negative two. But still there's plenty of upside potential left that, that the UDPI sees in the coming months um, to years. So even though we've chewed up some of that in this kind of 30 to 40% rally, I forget exactly how high it got from the absolute bottom to the, the kind of local top we put in before a slight correction that we're currently in, but nothing too major yet. So we've realized some of that upside potential, but there's still plenty more that it sees. So it's, it's still bullishly inclined, right? It thinks there's more realistic upside than downside potential. But of course, that doesn't mean that downside is impossible. You know, there's certainly realistic downside here. And it'll really depend, I think, on what Bitcoin does and, and what the broader equities markets do that might determine which way this goes, right? Does Bitcoin consolidate around 40K and then be able to move back to the upside from there? Or does it break back down through 40K and have to revisit levels in the, the kind of mid to lower 30s? You know, I think we're going to have to just watch and see how that happens. And I think a break below 40 could be concerning and, and maybe suggest that that kind of consolidation at an even lower level has to happen again. But I would see consolidation around 40K as being potentially bullish, especially um, combined with this low risk level. That if you can really show its establishment of support at that higher level, that could just be setting up for that next leg up where we start chewing up even more of this upside potential. So something that we'll be keeping an eye on, I do see 40K as being a pretty critical um, zone to be holding now that we're back up there. So in the medium term um, UDPI, it also is bullishly inclined. So it thinks there's more realistic upside than downside potential in the coming um, weeks. But again, we've chewed up some of that in the recent time. And so it does think that there is realistic downside potential that could happen, but it thinks there's more realistic upside. So again, if we were able to hold 40K, turn it into support, that could set us up to be able to realize some of that upside. Now in the short term, this is where it's most um, undecided. So you can see it's basically around zero, a little bit, slightly saying there's more downside than upside potential that's realistic, but that's not really particularly meaningful. It's basically just neutral is the way that I interpret this. And so essentially what this suggests is that in the short term, the coming days to weeks, the UDPI thinks that there's realistic upside that could happen. We could you know, go ahead and shoot back up to the upside, or there's also realistic downside that could happen if we do have to go back down and revisit the, you know, the kind of the lower levels we were just at, you know, down in the 30Ks, or we could just hang out where we are. We could just consolidate around 40k before setting us up for next move to the upside, for example. And so really, for the, the short term UDPI's perspective, it's it's not um, flashing uh, too far one side or the other, right? Uh, back before, at the local bottom, it was more bullishly inclined, it was saying there's more realistic upside than downside potential. But now we've realized a chunk of that upside potential. So it's a little bit more undecided about exactly where we might go. And I think that you know, I think that's that's reasonable. And I think, uh, frankly, that makes a whole lot of sense given what Bitcoin has done and how critical kind of this 40K level is. There is some short-term uncertainty most likely about will it be able to hold it, will it just launch off from it, or will it correct off of it. But I think if you look across the board with this, what this is telling me is that I think there's still a lot of reason to be bullish in the long term for Bitcoin. These levels have tended to coincide with good accumulation zones for Bitcoin in the past, especially in an upward trending market. And so I do, if I had to pick a side, I would I would think that this will more than likely than not, in hindsight, 
uh, look like a good accumulation zone. Now that might take a, you know, that might, that's talking about a longer term time horizon, right? You know, because that could even include the possibility of having to go back and retest 30k and then moving up. But ultimately, if our end destination is 100k, you know, people probably aren't going to think, be thinking about too much about buying Bitcoin at 40 or 30k. You know, in retrospect, it's going to look very sim fairly similar kind of zone before blasting off to that really high level. So that's my inclination. Now, I could be wrong. And of course, the caveat here is that this is assuming there's no black swan um, event or stock market crash or something that really just tanks markets across the board. You know, this is kind of assuming that historical trends continue to have some um, predictive ability for the future. But kind of barring a stock market crash or some other kind of black swan event, I do think that this will more likely than not end up looking like a good accumulation zone. Um, but of course, if one of those other events, events intervenes that could send Bitcoin into a protracted bear market, then all bets are off if that happens. But my current inclination is assuming none of that happens, I think more likely than not in hindsight, this will have looked like a good accumulation zone, even if more short term, shorter term pain ends up transpiring before that ultimate move up. And in a lot of ways with these long term UDPIs, it's about time horizon. And so, you know, if you're looking at the long term UDPI, but you're thinking it's going to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, that's just not what it's trying to do. That's not what it's going to be telling you. It's talking about these broad months to years kind of movements. It's not concerned about what's happening tomorrow, you know, the inter intraday uh, volatility. So just something to keep in, in mind with that. So to switch over to Ethereum, kind of being the other big dog in the crypto space, we see a very similar story. The kind of main difference with Ethereum is that it's potentially chewed up more of its realistic short time, short term potential. And so it's actually kind of uh, starting to get more overheated, not especially so, but in the short term, it is starting to overheat a bit. And in current market conditions, it would not surprise me at all if this ends up being kind of a point at which uh, the realistic this is about as much realistic upside potential that might be able to achieve in the kind of the short term it might have to consolidate for a while now maybe have to try to flip 3000 into support before it really be able to move back to the upside we'll have to see now obviously you know anything could happen if a big impulse enters into the crypto space again then certainly i think this upside potential would come right into play but in current kind of uncertain market conditions for me personally i think ethereum is probably likely to just kind of consolidate or maybe even have to correct a bit before we be able to move back to the upside. But that's just very questionable short-term speculation. Anything could happen. But that's just the main difference with the ETH um, short-term UDPI here is that it's a little bit more overheated in the short-term. But long-term story is, is actually very similar to Bitcoin. You can see that it's things there's more realistic upside than downside potential in the coming months to years. Same thing in the coming weeks to months. And so again, with Ethereum, you know, if I had to pick a side, I would say that it's probably more likely that this in hindsight will have been another good accumulation zone historically. But, you know, it's one of those things where more short term pain could happen. So that's that's one reason why some people suggest always using kind of a, a dollar cost averaging approach in the crypto markets, because that helps you kind of smooth out over that kind of short term volatility to capture kind of a, a good average cost basis in some of these um, kind of choppy accumulation zones. Now, not financial advice, you should form your own decisions about how to navigate these things. But that's just one thing that I think about in these kind of zones is that if you buy all at once, then then you're kind of, um, you know, if it just shoots to the upside, obviously, that's great, but you you're going to be more affected by some shorter term pain, potentially, it's just something that I keep in mind. So let's move over to the altcoin markets and see what they're what they're looking looking at. Um, and currently, the altcoins are quite uh, are generally fairly low risk across the board. So the only ones that are positive right now are Adam and Phantom. And the rest you'll note are all negative just to varying degrees. Some some uh, having um, realized more of their downside potential than others, one way of looking at this. Now, I think there's two different ways that we can look at this, right? Now, I think uh, the, the first thing that we might think of when we see this is, oh, wow, all coins are looking really tasty right now. And in some ways, I think that's true. But, but I think the important thing to keep in mind with all coins is that I think they're looking really tasty right now if we think that Bitcoin is going to maintain a bullish um, kind of perspective and continue moving up. I think if Bitcoin stays healthy and keeps going up, then this is an especially tasty time for a lot of altcoins right now. And, I, and then they would probably realize a lot of this upside potential if kind of the bear or the excuse me, the bull market uh, is suddenly becomes definitively back on and everything starts rallying. But of course, the the caveat or the problem with that is that that's kind of betting things on Bitcoin being able to stay, continue doing well and bullish market conditions um, being able to remain. And so I, th I think that really the way that you interpret these risk levels has to be through your lens of where you think Bitcoin's going next. 
If you think that Bitcoin's going to go up, if you're bullish on Bitcoin, then I think it makes sense to interpret these a little bit more um, kind of seriously as being the upside potential being more in play than the downside. If instead you think that Bitcoin is probably going to go into a bear market, if it's going to go negative, or even, even if you think that Bitcoin is just going to continue going sideways, like maybe it's just going to range between 40 and 30K for a long time, then altcoins tend not to do that well in those kind of environments. You, either if Bitcoin's bearish or if Bitcoin is just kind of uh, range bound, kind of going up and down, up and down, uh, oftentimes altcoins will end up kind of bleeding more on the down then they gain on those ups again, and they'll kind of just go in downtrends that are just kind of choppy to the downside. So I really think with these, you know, if you're thinking about which side of the upside versus downside is more likely to be in play, I think it really has to do with that bigger thesis about how Bitcoin or just the broader crypto market is going to do. And if you're bullish, then you might expect this upside potential to be a lot more juicy. And of course, another way that you can kind of maybe hedge in between those two possibilities is just shifting your your um, reference point when looking at these, right? You know, instead of looking at zero as being that neutral point, maybe you'd say, all right, I'm only I'm going to treat negative one as being a neutral point in these kind of more uncertain conditions. So I'm only going to be um, seeing uh, things as offering a favorable risk reward perspective if they're below negative one, or maybe you even go further and say only if they're below negative two do I think that they're offering some kind of a potential or a beneficial risk reward. And then maybe I'm not, you know, as likely to be throwing as much money at something. As I, as I would if I was treating zero as my reference point, then if I'm treating negative two as a reference point at a given price level. So for example, H bar, if you're treating negative two as your cutoff, then this would only be 0.28 below that. So it's not, it wouldn't be especially far below. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind with these, that one way of kind of hedging against that uncertainty is just shifting your, your frame of reference on these um, indicators. Instead of treating zero as a neutral point, you can treat a lower level. And then likewise, in bull markets, sometimes you might actually treat a higher level as your neutral point if you think that the upside potential side is more in play. Now, none of that's advice. You should form your own opinions of how to navigate these. Just one thing to keep in mind. And I do personally think that in these more kind of uncertain market conditions, I do think that a more nuanced perspective on altcoins is kind of uh, warranted just because there is inherently a lot more uncertainty in these times, um, just because they, they're beholden a lot, a lot of ways to what Bitcoin's doing, right? That if you're not in the middle of a definitive bull market, it's a lot less likely for these assets to totally decouple and be able to run while the rest of the market's going down. So just something to keep in mind with that. So medium term is telling a very similar story. The difference being here that only phantom is in the positive. But again, as I was saying, this is a lot of this has to do with the broader crypto market. But if you have a bullish perspective, you know, right now looks pretty tasty for a number of these different um, altcoins. But again, that's, uh, that's conditional on the market actually going, uh, maintaining or resuming a bullish sentiment which, you know, we'll have to, that we'll have to see if that ends up panning out. Um, you know, so far so good on Bitcoin's recovery, but I think we're going to have to see if it can hold 40K, et cetera, to be even more confident about that happening. And then short term, here we are um, again. And here, the only ones that are positive are Phantom, just slightly barely. That's just basically neutral, doesn't really count. And um, actually, uh, Tezos, interestingly, is, is a little bit overheated in the short term. But the rest of them are all in the negatives for the short term, although not exceedingly negative. So um, even though there is kind of a general bullish bias across the board for a lot of these, um, it's not definitive um, for, for a number of them. A lot of them are kind of hanging out a little bit closer to um, zero, which might suggest there's a little bit more kind of indecision for them in the short term. So what's my overall takeaway from all of these things? Well, I think my main takeaway here is that given a, is, well, a couple things. So a, I think given a longer time horizon, so looking at more the long-term UDPIs, and especially for Bitcoin and Ethereum, and also, frankly, I think I suspect for most of these altcoins, if not all of them, I think more likely than not, if we when we look back at this a year later or two years later, we'll probably look at this as being a good accumulation zone generally. Just looking at these different UDPI levels, historically speaking, whenever we hit these levels or whenever we have hit these in the past, it has generally been a good accumulation zone given a long enough time horizon, right? Because, you know, short-term pain has followed these kind of risk levels and certainly could do that again. But then given enough time, it ends up in retrospect being a good um, buying acquisition. You know, even frankly, if we are about to enter a bear market, when you've seen these kind of risk levels in previous bear markets for Bitcoin, for example, even though it's not the bottom of the bear market by any means, you know, that usually tends to be quite a bit lower or closer to negative five, for Bitcoin when it hits those bear market bottoms. Still, when you go far enough into the future, into the next market cycle, 
you know, any time in the previous bear market will look good when you're in the middle of the next parabolic run. And so assuming that we don't have any kind of black swan events like a stock market crash or some um, other kind of, you know, another pandemic or some uh, World War III or something like that, um, as long assuming none of those things happen, then I have no reason to expect that historical trends will necessarily just disappear. Um, I, I think that, you know, it's very plausible to me that we're in the middle, we're still in the middle of a bull market and we're just kind of having a correction, in the, a deep correction in the middle of it. We very well could see continued moves to the upside, but they might not happen immediately. They could happen um, quite a while from now. And even if, frankly, we are entering into a bear market, I think probably eventually we'd hit that next next uptrend that would blast us past where we are and finally get us up to the, you know, the 100K level, et cetera, where this would look advantageous. So I think the time horizon is really important to be interpreting this. So that's kind of my broader perspective is that short term, I think there's a lot of uncertainty and I hesitate to make any calls about what's going to happen immediately in the short term, right? Because I think what the UDPI is kind of telling me with a lot of assets, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum, is that it really could go either way in the short term, that each either way is is um, quite plausible, potentially with Ethereum actually a little bit more kind of downside, but either side seems fairly plausible. And it's more the kind of long term that I think we can still be, there's still some reason to be optimistic, barring some kind of uh, macro black swan event that derails the whole thing. So not financial advice, just my opinion, but that's my current perspective looking across at risk across the crypto markets. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more.